Now that we've gone over many ways to detect collisions, there's one more way I want to show you in which you can detect collisions, and that's through regions, or even lines, or even a point, which we've sort of gone through before. For this, I've got a room for a collision. I'll slide it over here, and there's not much going on inside from what we've seen before. I've got our player just sitting there, I've got one ball that's going to bounce around, and just some walls for the ball to bounce from, you know, against, so it can just go where it needs to go. Now, for this I'm not using a controller object, although it could be a controller object if you really wanted it to be. In this case, I'm just using object collision, which is that player that's going to be in the room. Since I'm going to be colliding with regions, I've got a draw event that's going to draw all of our regions, and I'll show each one as we go through them. Now, in our step event, the first region is going to be a circle. So I'll turn off the comment. So I've got a conditional statement that says, if collision circle, this is the function we're going to be concentrating on, collision, and here's our shape, which is circle. It needs a lot of different arguments. It wants an x and y value. This is going to be the center point of your circle. Then it wants the radius of the circle. I've chosen 64 as the radius. The next argument is the object. This is the object that we're going to be checking for when we collide. So I'm checking to see if the object ball is colliding with this circle. The next argument is precise. This wants to know if we're going to check precise collision or some sort of bounding box or bounding circle or ellipse. And I've chosen true for this to show you what we're going to do right away because if you remember from other videos, and I'll show you again here, this mask is an automatic ellipse. It's not manual and it's not set to precise. So it's not a precise collision mask. But if I don't choose precise, it's going to put kind of an imaginary bounding box around the pixels and check for that. So because of that, I wanted to do precise collision, which is a little more heavy on the computing power, especially if you were to have lots of different collisions. But in this case, I'm okay with it. And the last question for the argument is not me. And that's checking whether or not this instance is allowed to collide with the circle. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to have the conditional statement output a message that says ball is in the circle, just so we know the collision has happened. It's up to you to decide for your game what happens when the collision occurs. But let's just start slow and I'll show you what this looks like. Okay, so here we go. It's bouncing around and once it collides, there we go. The ball is in the circle. Now, of course, it's going to constantly be within the region of this circle. So this is just going to keep popping up and popping up because it's a step event. But once it's not in the circle, we don't get the message anymore. Now, I don't know if you could see, but it said it collided right when the edges of the pixels touched where this region was. The reason for that is because I selected true for precision. If I selected false for precision, the collision would happen when the imaginary square that is drawn around, the imaginary bounding box that will be drawn around this bullet, as it's called here, but it's actually a ball, collides with our circle. So here's what that would look like. Okay, so here we go. We got the ball bouncing around, and there. See how it says the ball's in the circle, but it, it doesn't look like it's touching. That's because we're not using the precise collision check. So it's drawing an imaginary box which bounds the pixels of the circle. So if you look, there's the corner of the box. That's what's happening. And that's because it's not precise. So sometimes you need to turn on precision collision, but it does tend to use a little more power from your computer. Okay, so this is great, but what if we don't want to draw a perfect circle? We want something more oblong or like an oval. Well, I can go to my draw, and instead of drawing the circle, I'm now going to draw an ellipse. And I've got the same settings here in the collision event. Or at least the step event, but where the collision is going to happen. And it says if collision ellipse. And now this is going to ask for four different coordinates. It's going to draw a box. And it wants the top left point of the box and the bottom right point of the box. So you, it wants this point and this point. And then it will draw a circle or an ellipse inside that box. Now I've chosen the center point, the x and y value of my player, and then how far away the box will be. 
So I want it to be 64 away on the left side, minus will go this direction, and then 96 up on the Y. So the point would be here. So if this is me, it would be over here and up here. And then the same, but positive. So that means it's going to go this way and this way, which means it's going to draw an oblong shape, an oval, that's taller than it is wider. And once again, after we've set our region, it just wants to know what we're going to check for the collision. We're going to check it we're going to check the object ball again. And then once again, we'll use precision and not me. That's true. And what it does, once again, we'll show a message that just says the ball is inside the ellipse. So here's what it looks like. So here we go. We've got our oval taller than it is wide. And there we go. Right when the ball collides with it, it's inside the ellipse, which will happen over and over again because it's a whole region. Now we can also check for a line. So we can turn off the drawing of an ellipse, and we're going to draw a line. And that line will be the same coordinates as this line. Let's turn off our ellipse. Okay, so if we go back into line, once again collision and then line. So this wants to know, like the box, the bounding box around the ellipse, eh, the first point and the second point. So I've chosen for the x, 0, which is going to be the very left boundary of the room. And then for its y value, I've chosen the room height, which is the very bottom, but divided by two. So that's halfway. So it'll be halfway through the room. And I've done the same for the second point. I've done room width, which is going to go all the way to the other side of the room and room height right here, divided by two. So halfway through. So my line will go exactly horizontal halfway through the room. And as before, we're going to do object ball except I have this set to false, but let's make it true and not me. And once again, just show a message to prove that it has collided with the line. And here's what it looks like. So there's a line drawn in the center of the room. And when the ball approaches it, right when it, there, right when it pixel perfect collision happens, because we've got precise on, it tells us that the ball is on the line. So there we go. We've got so far a circle, an ellipse, which is uh, a deformed circle. It's not a perfect circle. It's an oblong. And then we've got a line. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the next one is a point. So let's draw one point, one pixel in the room. We're, there we go. We're going to draw it at 200 and 220. And similarly, after we turn off collision with a line and turn on collision with a point, we've got collision point. That's just one coordinate in the room, one pixel point. And I'm going to put it at 200x, so 200x into the room, and 220y into the room. Once again, it's going to be the object ball, true and true. So these are always pretty simple. They're all similar. And then we're going to say the ball is on the point. So here's what this looks like. Okay, so we've got our ball bouncing around. It's kind of hard to see, but right here I've got that one pixel, that white point right there. And right when it collides, Bam, ball is on the point. And I can keep clicking frame by frame until it goes through, and there we go. So that's just one little dot if for some reason, there you go. If you need to collide with one point in the room, here's another way to do that. Now the last sort of shape I want to show you is a rectangle, probably one of the more common collisions we can do. I'm going to draw a rectangle in the room that's based on the center point of my object collision. We're going to turn off the point code, so there's no collision there anymore. And we're going to turn on the rectangle code. So this is if collision rectangle. And as before, it needs two points, the top left corner of the box, or should I say rectangle, and the bottom right corner of the box, or rectangle. And I've chosen 100 away from me this way and 100 away this way. And the same in the positive scale. So it'll be up here and up here. It'll draw a box around my object. Same arguments after that. And we're just going to show a message again. And here's what it looks like. Here we go. We got the ball bouncing around and our giant rectangle. Or in this case, it is a square because I did make it have perfect measurements. You can obviously make it stretch more in one direction, either width or height. But there we go. Precision collision right inside the rectangle, and I can keep clicking because it's a whole region and not just this little outline that I'm showing you. So that's it. I mean, you can collide with different instances, you can collide with all these different things, but if you want to collide with certain regions, you can do it like this. And you can do it with a control object. I don't have to do it with a visible object like a player that I'd be moving around, but maybe you want to. 
So I hope now you have a very good understanding of the different ways you can check for collisions in GameMaker. You can check with instances, or in this case, you can check with regions in the room.